Alright, I, I don't know why it's so difficult for, for administrators to get this. You would think people that, that are educators in public schools could actually learn, had the capability to learn. Maybe they, they only have the capability to administer or teach. But you would hope that they also had the ability to learn. And they're, they're really not. They're very closed-minded. As open as they pretend to be when it comes to culture and all of this stuff and diversity and new thoughts and whatever, they're, very not, uh, they're not very open people when it comes to learning. I, I cite as that my examples of like Little Miami, the school district that continues to put levy after levy after levy on the ballot and the people keep saying no, 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 and they keep doing it. I, I don't know. I guess it has to be that they're thinking, well, we'll be able to slide it through. The right tumblers will align. The right mix of people will turn out. The right spin will be in the press. We will scare them enough that we'll get just enough votes. I mean, the last one, Tuesdays, was separated by 143 votes. So they must just be hoping that it'll, it'll happen just, just the right way this time, or eventually it'll happen. Because they just keep putting them on the ballot. And now it looks like two, uh, two schools are going to have a levy on in November. Here's the latest two, Lakota and Fairfield. It looks like they are actually going to, well, it's no shock. We've known they were probably going to do this for a while. In fact, we had speculation that Lakota may try it a couple of days ago. They may have tried to put it on the May ballot. According to um, their meeting last night, the treasurer gave a list of recommendations to the Lakota Board of Education's um, finance committee, and they recommended that a levy be placed on the ballot this fall. They They didn't say how much yet or how long, Basically said it would probably be a short-term levy, perhaps three to five years, and the mills would be about 6.5. That's the millage. So while you're spending $50,000 to search for a new superintendent that could be paid $300,000 a year, you're going to go ahead and put another, another levy on the ballot this fall. How about cutting back what you're planning on paying that superintendent? If you have $300,000... I would say you've still got some room to cut. If you're willing to spend $50,000, I'd say you still got some room, room to cut. By the way, I just saw a story. Someone sent me a story uh, about Superintendent North that he was interviewing up in um, Twinsburg schools, just southeast of Cleveland. And he's making, I think, and, was making $106,000 a year. And they were going to pay him one hundred and thirty, dollars hundred and forty. That would be if he were to get that job. And I'm reading the article, and I'm like, okay, so he has an opportunity up there. And then one of the biggest parts of the story was that they spent under $7,000 for their search. So $50,000 seems a little inflated. By the way, Twinsburg School, it's it's not a a bad school. It's one of the best in the state. And they were only spending $7,000 on their search, Lakota $50,000. And, of course, cutting back the busing, but... You're going to go ahead and put a levy on the ballot this fall. The other one, Fairfield City School District. The district has a $12 million deficit. That's what they're facing by 2013. $12 million, $29 million spending deficit by 2014. So they are likely to put a levy on the ballot this November. This this has become like kids when they keep asking you for things. Can I have a donut? No. Can I have a donut? No. Can I have a donut? No. You say to yourself, if I had said yes, would you keep asking? How many times do I have to tell you no before it actually sticks? Apparently, when you run a school district, if you need money, it's infinite. Doc Thompson, 700 WLW. All right, I mentioned Fairfield schools. Fairfield City Schools going to look for a levy. Look for a levy this fall. And when I talked with um, Rich Hoffman yesterday from No Lakota Levy, I touched on something that I found on the Lakota website. I have linked to it at my blog, 700WLW.com, for you to see as well. I've just noticed in the past week how much focus schools put on the wrong thing. I noticed it earlier this week on Wednesday 
in the supplement that Rich, uh, that, uh, what is it, CPS, CPS uh, puts in the Inquirer. Their gear up scores, where they talk to kids that I've made fun of in the past because kids aren't running home to read this. I noticed it there. I noticed it on Lakota's site. And I noticed it on Fairfield's site this morning. What is, what is the goal of public schools? What is, what is the goal? I would think it's, it's a pretty obvious question, right? A pretty obvious answer. What is or what should be the goal of a public school? One word. Educate. Now, you can get into some other things as well. You know, more flowery language, more wordy. But it all still comes back or should come back to educate. One word, very simple. Their goal, their mission statement should be to educate. You can say, well, we also want to prepare them for jobs and work and whatever. Okay, fine. But that still falls under educate. Would you consider their goal to be teaching diversity or being culturally aware. I would think if you're a school, first and foremost, you should say our mission statement is education. I noticed on Fairfield School's uh, website today under their mission, and they have kind of bullet pointed about 10 things or so, and then they have beliefs about 10 things or so. First on their list, develop cultural responsive practices. They're not even saying teach culture or teach diversity, develop culturally responsive practices. That is what Fairfield Schools is saying their main mission is. The first one on the list, develop culturally responsive practices. Second, provide safe and secure buildings that are adaptable for future educational practices. What about current educational practices? So first is to develop cultural responsive practices. Second of all, provide safe and secure buildings. Third, Fairfield City Schools say, offer superior learning experiences for students and staff. The staff is learning? I thought they were teaching. Second, or fourth on the list, exceed state and national performance standards. So they're teaching to the standards as opposed to educating. Fifth on the list, meet the diverse needs of all students and staff. Again, with the diversity. This is the goal of schools? Cincinnati Public Schools know better, and Lakota far worse. I'll share that with you coming up on the Home of the Reds, 700 WLW.